in every prophetic service like this, things happen per second, per second. And I'm sure something unforgettable is packaged for someone here tonight. <laughs> Under this liberation unction, whatever represents captivity in any form, in anyone's life, is declared shattered in the name of Jesus. The blessings of the Lord make us rich and he has no sorrow to it. He said, when I bless you, I will defend the blessing. For I will bless him that blesses you and him that causes you, I will cause. That means when God blesses, no devil can unbless. That order of irreversible blessing becomes your portion here tonight. That order of irreversible, uncontaminatable blessing, indestructible blessing, becomes somebody's portion here tonight. Hi everyone, welcome to PR on Daily YouTube channel. In this teaching, God's servant Bishop David Oyedebo explains clearly the cost of blessings. Please, if this message has blessed you, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Be blessed as you listen to it. No man can reverse God's blessing in another man's life. You are blessed, you are blessed. The Abrahamic covenant, among other things, guarantees the defense of God's blessing in our lives. I will bless him that blesses you, and him that causes you, I will cause. I will cause. That means when it comes from God, it stays. The last up and down you saw is the last you will ever see in your life. The Bible also says, prove me now if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sins. Mm -hmm. So when God blesses, he rebukes the devourers to preserve the blessing. So whatever represents the activities of devourers around your life, tonight that is shattered in the name of Jesus. In Isaiah 65 and verse 8, he says, destroy it not, for a blessing is a name. Thus saith the Lord, as the new one is found in the cluster, and one said, destroy it not, for a blessing is a name. So will I do for my servant's sakes, that I may not destroy them all. Everyone that carries a blessing in him is indestructible. <laughs> Destroy now for a blessing, isn't it? I'm proving that if not, I've not opened you the window, I'm pouring you out a blessing. Nero Shagara Tasego. Destroy him not for a blessing, isn't it? Aresco by a Shagarita Sole Prodiaeta. I declare you all indestructible. <laughs> the robbers gave him money and apologized to him for wasting his time. The fall and the heavens thundered. He said, Who is that? He says, My father. 
How much more when God your father shows up? From this time on, I see your father God show up every time trouble shows up. Destroy it not. Sickness, destroy it not. Diseases, destroy it not. Economic downturn, destroy it not. For a blessing, isn't it? We are not just talking about material blessings, we are talking about comprehensive blessings. It makes rich and it does not permit sorrow to tamper with it. May all the blessings of Abraham become feasible in your own life. Somebody believes that, let me hear your loudest, amen. Give the Lord a big, big hand of praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Please get seated. Cotton, a covenant of financial fortune. Part two, and we do that very briefly. Cotton, a covenant of financial fortune. That is, identify the terms and commit to it by obedience of faith and by so do you have committed God's integrity to perform. Mm. Blessing is not free. It's always delivered at a cost. Genesis 27 and verse 1 Isaac was old and stricken in age. He called his head and son and said, My son, he said, him, Behold, there am I. He said, Verse 2. Ah, behold, now I'm old, and I do not know the day of my death. So, now therefore, take, I pray thee, thy weapons, thy quiver and thy bow, and go out to the field and bring me and take me some venison that I am make me suffer the meat such as I love that I may eat it and that my soul may bless thee before I die. Go and bring me what I love. Then you trigger the blessings in my heart that I may pour it on you before I go. So blessing is not free. That's why there are so many unblessed people in church. They are waiting for free blessings. Blessing is not free. It carries a cost. Take thy weapons, thy bow, thy quiver, and go out to the field and bring me, take me, Bring me some bush meat. Get me some grass cutter, some antelope. You know that one I love, not the old one, middle aged. Go search for them and cook it. Bring it. Cook it. Let it smell good. You know the way I like it and bring it to me. Until I eat it, my soul can't bless you. My mouth can't, but my soul can't. To pull out the things in my soul, bring me what I love. This is so important. Everybody wants to be blessed. It is the cost that is not palatable most of the time. And so he brought the venison and he ate it 
and blessed him. And the blessing stayed on. And the man increased. The blessing brought increases. The blessings brought multiplication. And you know the story of the man called Jacob? How God dealt wondrously with him. After he brought it, he blessed him. Therefore the Lord gave thee the dew of heaven and the fatness of the earth and plenty of corn and wine. Verse 28. Let people serve thee and nations bow down to thee. Be Lord over thy brethren and let thy mother son bow to thee. Cursed be everyone that curses thee and blessed be everyone that blesses thee. That blessing came upon him after paying the price. After paying the price. After paying the price. And verse 41 of chapter 30 of Genesis. And the man increased exceedingly and had much cattle and maid servants and men servants and camels and asses. The man increased exceedingly. The man increased exceedingly. That's going to be your story. Yeah. That's going to be your story. Yeah. That's going to be your story. Yeah. That blessing also came out of heaven. And whatever is from above is above all. Whatever comes from above, we never compare with what operates on the earth. The Lord gave thee the deal of heaven. That's what Isaac said. And when that deal came, the man increased exceedingly, exceedingly, exceedingly. One of the terms of the covenant for financial fortune is spiritual stewardship. What do I call it? Thou shalt serve the Lord thy God. And he shall bless thy bread and thy water. He shall take sickness away from the midst of thee. You shall not be barren, nor cast your young in the land. And the number of your days he will fulfill. Exodus 23, verse 25 and 26. Thou shalt serve the Lord, and he shall bless. That covers everybody. God has no sponsors. Because God will never need sponsorship. So no matter your level of giving, Spiritual stewardship is a requirement for enjoying sustainable financial fortune. Mm -hmm. That to give 10 million tithe, there is no clapping. It's a tenth of his blessings. You are not his sponsor. He's your sponsor. If he didn't give you one, you can't get one tenth out of it. After Job lost everything, he never lost his worship connection. Do you still hold to your integrity? Are you still celebrating God? Cause God and die. So spiritual still worship is the insurance of financial fortune. What do I call it? Is your insurance, God's insurance strategy for your financial fortune. You know, John D. Rockefeller was several times elected janitor of their church. 
you know janitor, the one who shuts the door. He was also a Sunday school teacher. When at a time he, he had the monopoly of the oil industry in America. In the midst of his fortune, he was ensuring his destiny by spiritual stewardship. Sam Walton, a major promoter of Sunday school ministry, the founder of Walmart before he passed on, lived his life promoting that aspect of Jesus' ministry by being practically involved in it, apart from pushing money, was pushing his life in it. When you sit down in church doing nothing, adding no value, you are losing value without knowing. Thou shalt serve the Lord thy God, and he shall bless. You know, this church is made of blessed people because there are, uh, everybody is involved in one thing or another except those who chose not to. We are getting close to 7,000, 8,000 uh, cell fellowships and then you have, you know, uh, ministers, you have assistant ministers, you have secretaries, so not to be part of that. You have an army of sanctuary keepers, about 4,000, 5,000 people. You have an army of hospitality and there is nothing you can see yourself in except to collect prayer after service. Thou shalt serve the Lord thy God, and he shall bless thy bread and thy water. Thou shalt serve, and he shall bless. Job 36, verse 11. If they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasures. Job 36, and verse 11. They shall spend they are days in prosperity if they obey and serve him. They obey him in their giving and they serve him with the investment of their time and energy. It's a combination of the two. They shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. Spiritual stewardship is a vital factor in taking delivery of your financial fortune in the kingdom. In Haggai chapter 1, I'm beginning from verse 3. The word of the Lord came to Haggai the prophet saying, These people say the time is not come, the time that the house of the Lord should be built. So they went on living in their own panel houses. Hmm. And so they went about. When they bring them much, behold, it became little. When they earn wages, I put holes in their pockets. Why, said the Lord, because of my house that lies in ruins and they run everyone to their own house. Therefore, the heaven over you is shut from you. And the earth from yielding her fruit. The heaven over you is dead from deal, verse 10, and the earth is dead from our fruit. Why? Because of my house that is neglected. Therefore, I shut the heaven over them. So, still, spiritual stewardship is one of the covenant requirements for working in financial fortune. Understand what I'm talking about? The whole body is built together by that which every joint supplies. What are you supplying? Spiritual stewardship, not tied to bearership.
We hold our services in 900 different locations today. So, in Lagos, now, there is tea worship requirement in every place. So, assuming you don't have one in the center, you must have one in 900. You, one. He said, if you delay like you know, my west and observe to do all, not some, all, 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 there is more to financial fortune than giving. If they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. Somebody's breaking forth now. When your involvement is by obedience of faith, not just a religious activity, then you commit God's integrity to bless. You are not just involved because you see others going in. You are involved because you know it's part of the covenant requirements for assessing blessings from heaven. And then the heavens open. The Lord show up, showed up around the dwelling place of Abraham and he saw three men. The Bible says, and the Lord came down and he saw three men. He ran to them. My Lord, come. So he knew they were not normal people. He saw God's hand around and he brought, look, let me get you something to eat. Take some water, take some milk. And he was just, and there a blessing was proclaimed upon him. So Abraham's blessing came also by spiritual stewardship. Chapter 18 of Genesis, verse 1 to 16. He also encountered blessings by spiritual stewardship. Abraham went to go and worship God. He said, Look, you hold on here. And me and the son will go up to the mountain and worship and come back to you. The servant was used to worshiping. He knew it. So he wasn't saying, no, 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 I'll go with you. He knew that he goes to worship. Can I hear your amen? Genesis 22, 22. Now, it means, therefore, that your blessing will be limited without practical engagement in spiritual stewardship. There must be some place you are adding value to the kingdom of God in your life. The young man that shared the testimony said, I joined the sanctuary keepers. I came in here only 10 years ago. My life was meaningless. I was not married. I had nothing in my life. Everything was there at transport. And when I said, if they know my problem, that means they must have the answer to it. Because I sat down here and I had them diagnose my problem. So they knew my problem. This is my first day of coming here. If they knew the problem here, then they must have the answer here. <laughs> and he saw among the answers, if you want to be free, then you better connect to active engagement. So he joined Sanctuary Keepers. And I said, you see, I have houses. I have in some cities. And then that's where heaven was open. I see your heavens open finally now. Can somebody see what I'm talking about here? I see your heavens open finally now. I see your heavens open finally now. So the heaven was closed because of lack of interest in spiritual stewardship. That's the whole story of Agai chapter 1 verse 3 to 11. The heaven was closed because of lack of the need, the consciousness of the need to involve yourself in spiritual stewardship. We are not having fun. We are working with God. A covenant work with God is your access to a world of spiritual fortune, a world of financial fortune. And that work has many steps into it. Thank God for the master key, but thank God for the security of the open heaven blessings in your life. Spiritual stewardship is what brings it on. Can I hear your amen? amen. Can I hear your amen? amen? 
Somebody's breaking new grounds here. If that looks like you, let me hear your loudest. Amen. He said, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. All these things shall be added unto you. Quickly, number two, covenant factor for assessing financial fortune. In this part two that we are looking at, it's what I call national stewardship. What do I call it? Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love thee. Psalm 122 and verse 6. They shall prosper that love thee. So your financial fortune is also therefore a function of your affection for your nation. <laughs> God said to Abraham, now you see, I've heard of the evil that's going on in Sodom and I'm going to destroy the place. Let me go and find out if it is all together what they said. And Abraham stood still and said, God, would you also destroy the righteous with the wicked? He stood in the gap and pleading the cause of a people that were to be destroyed. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love thee. Your financial fortune demands your holy affection for the well-being of men and women that dwell in the land where you find yourself. David said, if I forget thee, O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget her calling. Psalm 137, verse 5 and 6. If I do not prefer thee above my chief joy, if I do not remember thee, let my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth, if I prefer not Jerusalem above my chief joy. And David, enjoyed financial fortune because the secrets of men are in their stories. You cannot prosper in a land you do not love. You cannot prosper in a land you do not love. Your portion in any land is a function of your affection for that land. And David became so wealthy. First Chronicles chapter 29 and verse 3 to 5. He said, and now because of my affection for the house of my God, I have given out of all my private treasure. He had a private treasury. David had a private treasury. And what he gave was more than what the whole of Israel gave towards the tabernacle. I'm saying something to someone this morning. Your commitment to the well-being of your nation is a covenant factor for the blessings of God in your life. So get involved. Can I hear your amen? Get involved. Get involved. Get involved. Not just religiously when you gather in church. Be genuinely committed to the well-being of your nation. Get involved. Nehemiah was a captive boy. But he couldn't stand the suffering of the people and see how he flourished. His affection for his nation opened up a word of financial fortune, a word of blessings to him. Suddenly, a captain, a captain became a captain. 
He went as a laborer to see the glory of his nation restored. He ended up a governor. Gideon was a poor farmer. And he sat down there, oh God, how long, how long, how long? And God saw him, I found you who will bring an end to it. And Gideon became a generational leader by a passion for his nation. If all people under the sound of my voice today would demonstrate genuine affection for their nations, there would be a restoration of glory. If all Nigerians would demonstrate genuine affection for their nation, there would be a restoration of our glory. If all Kenyans would demonstrate genuine affection for their nation, there would be a change. These are hidden treasures in the field. I'd like you to take advantage of them and engage them in rewriting your own story. 1979, a little boy. I had no calling to ministry, but I saw fire burning. And I called a three day of prayer and fasting for the nation. It was during the, before the calamity of two thirds or one third problem. Election has not held, but I saw fire about to burn. And I called a three day of fasting and prayer for the nation. On the third day, the heavens came down. He said, when I give peace, who can cause trouble? He said, the trouble is over. Every genuine lover of his nation flourishes supernaturally there. Do you love your nation? If all Nigerians love their nation the way I do by grace, we'll have a revolution. A change has come to Nigeria. A change has come to the nations of Africa. A change has come to the nations of the world. So whichever nation you are in today in this service, understand that one of the Abrahamic, access to Abrahamic order of blessings is standing the gap for your nation and playing your part as unto the Lord. Spiritual stewardship, national stewardship, all will culminate in God's grace on your life. That is the story of a man, a centurion, in Luke chapter 7, verse 2 to 5, whose servant was sick. And then they came to Jesus. He sent the elders of the Jews to Jesus, and they came to him. Master, this man is worthy that this should be done for him because he loved our nation. He loved our nation and has built us a synagogue. So your love for your nation qualifies you for divine intervention. Qualifies you for what? Qualifies you for divine intervention. Qualifies you for divine intervention. Your love for your nation. And Jesus said, I will come. Come on. He said, I will come. He loves his nation. I will come. He loves his nation. I will come. He loves his nation. I will come. I see Jesus walking his way into your place. I'm bringing a change of story for you. Somebody is blessed tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Stand to your feet, everybody. Give the Lord a big shout of hallelujah. Give the Lord a big, big shout of hallelujah. Lift up your two hands and receive grace for sustainable still worship. Spiritual still worship. And grace to engage in your national stewardship. As a seed of Abraham. Standing still before the Lord. Standing in the gap for the people. Pleading for mercy in the land. Remember. There is always a cost attached to the blessings of the Lord in our life. Among the cost tonight is your spiritual stewardship. Active engagement in adding value to the kingdom at one level or another in your life. Not waiting and watching for things to happen but being a part of the great happenings. Lift up your hands and take grace from God right now. Everybody take grace from God right now. Be 
ye not be ye trust of the world and not hear us only deceiving your own self. Take grace to remain spiritually committed to spiritual stewardship and in standing regard for your nation. Take that grace right now. You cannot connect with Abrahamic order of blessing without taking Abrahamic order of steps. Lord, I receive grace to stand in the gap for my nation. My nation shall not be destroyed by war. Famine will not overrun my nation. Let's lift up our voices to heaven. Let God hear you. I'm taking grace tonight. Jesus precious name let me hear your loudest amen if you are there let me hear your loudest amen if you are there we are going to have a miracle time of praise right now and please listen to me he says sing ye praises with understanding has somebody caught some fresh light tonight I'd like you to celebrate God for the efficacy of that light in your life as we praise him. Just see yourself assessing the next level of financial fortune. See yourself breaking forth into the next level of financial fortune. I want you to praise him with understanding. There shall be supernatural visitations now. Hear me? He said, the Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. We invoke his presence, his manifest presence by praise because he inhabits the praise of his people. And when he comes down, he saves, he delivers, he rejoices over us with singing. God will take joy over you this time. That means testimonies will be born in the midst of this praise. If you are sure of your testimony right now, in the midst of this praise, shout hallelujah. He said, the Lord is gone up with a shout. He said, the mighty God with the sound of the trumpet. God going up means God stepping in. As we praise him now, I see him stepping to this camp. I'm causing the unusual to happen. If that looks like you going to experience it, let me hear your loudest amen. We are not singing to stay awake. We are pressing to turn God on. Amen. The liberation unction will be made manifest right now. Can I tell you this? Everything you don't want will be given, leaving you right now where you are. Everything corrupting the covenant in your life will be losing its grief from you right now. In the name of Jesus. Now everybody receive the garment of praise right now. Receive that garment of praise. And now let's go. <laughs> 